Hello there. Welcome back to Jenny Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I'm working on an art journal page with watercolor. So get comfy. And let's get crafty. This is the mood board for the Artsy Trio Facebook group. It is created by Mike Deacon. It is all things pastel and yummy treats and summer delectables. And I wanted to watercolor. I enjoyed watercoloring a couple of weeks ago, so I pulled out a piece of watercolor paper, and I don't know if you can see it. I've tried to zoom in there a little bit. I've sketched out some ice creams. I'm going to be watercoloring them with this Winsen, Winsor & Newton watercolor palette that my children got me for Christmas, and I'm going to begin by taping down my watercolor paper to my hardboard. And this will allow me to move the board around and um, if I need the paper or the water rather to move the ink around on my paper. Um, I do not consider myself um, a sketch artist. <laughs> However, I am so pleased with how this turned out. I'm just giddy with excitement and I can't wait to share it with you. Um, I'm adding some water to my pans of paint with an eye uh, dropper and then I have just started with the first ice cream is a cone ice cream ice cream cone and I'm filling in the center with clean water and then I'm adding pigment to the edges to try and um, create a shadow but also the pigment of the watercolor will only go where the paint is. So by drawing around the other images on my page, the pigment will settle into where the water was. I have sped this up oh, two or three times normal speed. It did take me a little while to get it done, but I spent some time working on it. Now I'm trying to prevent my pigment from spreading, so I'm trying to or my plan is to paint items that are not touching. So I painted the ice cream cone and then I have an ice cream popsicle stick up there, that little tiny rectangle of brown. And now I'm painting a, a dish, an ice cream dish. I will say that as I go on, the pastel color palette got lost while I was trying to create some shadows and dimension. And I did need to take a minute to figure out how to fix that. You'll notice when we get there. I'm going to heat set these um, three little paint um, sections dry with my heat tool. And then I'm going to begin to color in the ice cream. Now this ice cream in the bowl, I want it to be a pink, a strawberry or a sherbet or you know, whatever. I just wanted it to be pink and pastel -y. and I got a nice pastel pink for the, ba the base layer. I um, was really pleased with the shape. I was pleased with how some of the shadowing was settling. Um, so it kind of looked like multiple scoops of ice cream in this dish. Um, I did put some of the pink from the Windsor Newton palette into this little ceramic palette because I could water it down with um, clean water and, and lighten the color some. Um, and here's where it starts to go. Um, here's where it starts to go. <laughs> My shadows were just a little too dark to be considered um, pastel any longer. <laughs> but I really wanted to work on that part of my watercolor skill, that adding shadows. So the next thing I'm working on is this um, fudge bar ice cream on the popsicle stick. Um, I did remember to um, draw in with my water. You saw me going in with clean water first. I did remember to draw in a highlight when I was drawing in the water that I can trace the outside with pigment. And that way the watercolor pigment will only go into the areas where water is and that's not inside the highlight area. I was really pleased when I was sketching this out that I was able to get that look of ice creams kind of stacked behind each other and some, some sense of dimension. You know, that popsicle is a little bit to the back and the ice cream cone is in the front. 
I did really have to think about how I was going to um, color these ice creams as well in order to keep the chocolates from blending into the sticks and the cones. And so it took me a minute. Um, I want to color the scoop of ice cream on the cone vanilla. Um, I do not like vanilla ice cream. I think it is the most boring ice cream on the history of man. The only time I like it is if it has something else yummy in it. So I've taken this um, kind of orangey brown. I think it's a burnt sienna. And I started by adding the white watercolor, but it was just not, <clears throat> excuse me, it was not um, lightning fast enough. So I pulled out a little bottle of gouache. It's white gouache that I have in my drawer. And that was able to um, knock that color back substantially. The downside to adding the gouache, well, I don't know if it's a downside. Um, when you add the gouache, it does change the consistency of the watercolor a little bit. So gouache is a medium that is the consistency of a more liquid style acrylic paint, but it's water reactive. And I like to have that white gouache in my stash for doing splatters and things like that. Um, so I've painted my vanilla scoop and I'm letting it dry and I needed to add some dimension and shadows to this ice cream dish and Instead of just using a gray, there's a Payne's gray in this palette and a little bit of the green, I kept adding the same color of green. So instead of staying a pastel green ice cream dish with some shadows, it just kept getting darker because I forgot all about that adding gray to things for a while. And then this scoop of ice cream looks like, I don't know, some kind of weird puppy dog face or the shape got lost as I was trying to add the dimension. Um, and I'm like, oh, I don't love this so much anymore. Okay, we're going to leave that and come back. I wanted to add some more shadow and detail to this ice cream cone. I wanted to add the cross hatching that you frequently see on those um, sugar cones or the waffle cones. So I went in again with the brown and added the um, cross hatching. Um, got a little heavy handed there in a couple places. But that's okay because I still need to add some shadows. So while that is drying, I'm going to add a lighter brown to my highlight on my fudge sickle. My only thing about this highlight is it should have been more to the um, upper right. It's a little bit too close to the center for me. Um, but now I'm going to bring in that um, dark brown again to, and start adding some shadows to my fudge bar, which... Of all of the ice cream treats, um, fudge bars are probably my favorite. And there is a brand here where we live in Virginia called Bluebell, and they make the yummiest, yummiest fudge bars. They're so good. Even my husband, who likes vanilla ice cream, likes these fudge bars. Okay, in order to add shadow to my vanilla, I added a little bit of brown to that well of um, vanilla colored paint I had already created. And I'm just kind of adding some shadows where the scoops are meeting. I'm adding some shadows to where the scoops meet the cone. And of all of the things on this page, this scoop of vanilla ice cream, I think turned out the absolute best. Which just, you know, because chocolate's my... <sighs> I wish the chocolate had turned out the best. <laughs> but whatever. Um... All of these shapes I was super pleased with as I drew them because they came out, at least as I was drawing them, just how I pictured. Um, the coloring, well, especially that pink scoop of ice cream down there. My son came in, he's like, why do you have a cupcake with your ice cream? I'm like, it's not a cupcake. So I did find a way to make it look less cupcakey when we get to the end here. But I'm just going to continue to add pigment to my vanilla ice cream into the shadow parts and looks a little bit like it's got a smiley face, but that's okay. I can, I can lighten that up with a little water. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and heat set that. I did have my heat tool close in case I needed to dry things while I was working. Um, I can't remember what I'm mixing now all of a sudden. Oh, the green. This is where I remembered that I could add, um, I could tone down the, the green to make it um, 
more of a shadow by adding the gray. Um, so I did. I put some green pigment in there. I put some gray pigment in there. I added a lot of water to thin it out. And at this point, it just was getting... I was losing that pastel. This is when I realized I was just losing the pastel and I either had to embrace it or rethink it. And at first my plan was to embrace it, but I was having a really hard time getting that rounded. So when I'm coloring with Copic markers or color pencils and I'm coloring something round, I have the sides darker and the front lighter and it gives it that rounded look. It's having a really hard time with this ice cream dish. So I left it alone. I went back to that popsicle stick to add a little bit of dimension and um, texture into that popsicle stick, a little bit more color. Um, and any times I'm taking the color away, I'm cleaning out my brush I'm wiping it on my cloth right there and then picking up the wet pigment with, it's called a thirsty brush. I've heard it called a thirsty brush because when your brush is dry and your pigment is wet, your dry brush will pick up some of the extra pigment. Okay, so then I go back and I've got to add some more dimension to this pink ice cream, which is rapidly losing. <sighs> I'm rapidly becoming more and more frustrated with it. And I was so pleased at the beginning, you know, so I'm like, Ugh, what do I do? And I even at one point put it down and let it dry and walked away because um, I was trying to not overwork it. But at the same time, I knew what I wanted, the, the outcome I wanted in my head. So I had to figure out a way to get that and I had to walk away from it to get to that point. So I've added a little bit of more shadow to that highlight. I'm adding a little more chocolate shadow to the fudge bar. Um, I'm really happy with the scoop of vanilla ice cream. I do think the ice cream cone needs a little bit of work. Um, I don't have a lot of practice using this particular watercolor pan um, or this brand, Windsor Newton. I've used my Tom, uh, my Gonzi Tombi ones more, what is it, Gonzi Tombi watercolors and my um, Mige Mijello Mission Gold watercolors a little more often. But truth be told, most of my watercolor work is done with watercolor pencils because I'm a control freak. And with watercolor pencils, I can control where the pigment goes. Um, I am adding more dimension to this ice cream cone right there behind the scoop of strawberry or sherbet, whatever, the pink ice cream. And right under the scoop of the vanilla because naturally that would cast a shadow down onto the base of the cone. I'm appreciating that. I'm deciding to not hate the hard edges. And I think that's one of the things about watercolor I struggle with is hard edges. But in order to get that dimension, you have to have hard edges. Sometimes I guess, or I have to, I don't know what other people do because this is new to me. Okay. In an attempt to figure out what to do with my cupcake looking ice cream, I left it. I added some clean, clear water to the background of my paper. And then I'm adding a very pale, layer of blue pigment. Um, in real life, it is much easier to see than it is on the camera. And that's just due to the lighting I have in my craft room so that it doesn't look like I am filming videos in a dark cave. <laughs> I keep the blinds in my craft room shut because we have a very um, wooded lot. Our house is in a very wooded lot. And so the shadowing can become problematic when I'm filming. So I just keep my curtains closed over my blinds. And then if it's um, when I need to, I just add the extra lights. And it kind of, it does um, blow out some of those really light colors. But in the photographs at the end, in real life, you can see it and it looks really nice. Um, I just, I did remember to go in between the popsicle stick and the ice cream cone. I did not leave that. I did remember to go there. And once I had this blue wash down all over the whole background. Um, I did kind of um, really finesse the edges and then I put it down and walked away. I um, needed to figure out how to bring my pastels back to that pink ice cream and the um, green dish. Um, so I put it down. I let it be. I walked away and then I brought my ceramic palette and my gouache back in. So I added some of that pink watercolor to the palette 
and mixed it with the gouache to get a very pale, pale pink. And then I took a wet brush and picked some of the pigment up out of that scoop of um, ice cream. And while it was wet, I added the gouache back down on top of it. Now, because that white gouache is mixed with the watercolor paint, it's gonna become a little less transparent. So it will um, push back some of that bold coloring that was occurring while I was trying to create a dimensional ice cream scoop. And it still looks a little bit like a cupcake, like I'm looking at it going, oh, it's still cupcakey, but okay. I'm just gonna continue to put some of that really light on there. Um, I heat set it and it dried back a little darker than I wanted, so I put another layer on there. And I'm gradually getting the shape that I liked back. So then I'll just have to figure out how to add the dimension without creating that cupcake look again. So I pulled that green from the dish into my palette and added some gouache to that and some water as well to make it nice and thin and runny. And I repeated that process with a clean, clear brush uh, and a dry brush. I pulled some of that pigment out and as soon as my brush was moving the pigment around instead of pulling it out, I stuck it in my water pot there off to my right and, and rinsed it out again. I've even got a, a napkin or a tissue in one hand that I'm um, pulling some of that pigment off my brush with. Um, and then I took that um, gouache mixture, the green gouache mixture, and went over the dish. And that for sure gave me that palette -y look again. Now I will say that the parts of this image that are painted with the gouache watercolor mix are a little more chalky, a little less transparent. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. Now once I had the, the what's the word I'm looking for, the shade back into place, I took a little bit of that grayed green, just a little bit and put it right on top of that wet gouache mixture and it soaked in and it gave me that gorgeous shadow right there on the left. So I did the same thing with the pink. I added some pink pigment and then right away added a little bit of gouache if I needed it. And the pink in the palette is very watered down, about a lot of water and a little pigment. And that's helping to create um, the shadows without going really dark again. And instead of tracing the entire shape this time, I just added the, sh the dark pieces where I thought there would be um, shadows. And I'm pleased with how that turned out. Um, I did lose a little bit of the initial shape, but I am pleased with how it turned out. So now that it's all dry, I have heat set it on my board. I'm taking the tape off and taking the um, art journal page. I have trimmed this down before I started drawing to five and a half by eight and a half. So it's the same size as the other art journal pages in my um, Artsy Trio binder. I have these acrylic paint pens and they have a dual nib. One's a brush nib, one's a bullet nib. And I experimented a little bit and the brush nib did some kind of cutesy sprinkles. So I pulled out a pink and a purple um, to kind of add to that color palette. And then with my label maker, I typed out the phrase, ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. My dad used to say that all the time. And then I put it right down here in the left-hand corner of my page. I pulled out a brown acrylic paint pen and re-added my hash marks to my ice cream cone. Pulled out my hole punch and realized I was such a dummy. I put that label down right where my hole would go. So I very carefully lifted that up. The only place it peeled was right there on the edge of that dish where there's lots of paint and where I had lots of water and I just covered that part up again. So I've punched the holes in it. I have pulled out my um, mood board printout. I'm going to add some really strong adhesive to the back of the mood board because the watercolor paper is textured and I have added quite a bit of water to it over the course of the project and so it is a little bit warped as well. So once I have the backing of this tape, um, tear, tape and tear, tape and tear, sequin tape, I don't know, whatever it's called, once I have all the backing strips off, I can just add this to the back of my um, art journal page. 
and then I need to sign and date it. So I've grabbed a zig pen out of my drawer and I just wrote my name in the, the month. I don't usually put the date, the day in, I just put the month and the year. And so there's a, a shot into the quote and, and you can see here in the photograph that blue background is nice and light and pretty. Thank you for stopping by my channel today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I loved creating this page. I have a couple other videos here for you to watch as well as a subscribe button. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, I would love it if you did. Leave me a comment below, give me a thumbs up and have a fabulous, fabulous day.